Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Intuitive Analysis of Non-Conservative Electrical Circuit in an Answer to a Riddle. Thanks are due to stats for fruitful discussion and assistance in carrying out laboratory measurements. In a previous video, I've posed a sort of a riddle uh, like this. We have a ferrite core here. It's a dual E core. Here's a cross section. This is the core cross section. We have a primary winding excitation, which is imposing a flux here. And then there is another winding. It's a single turn here. Here it is, the single turn, which has two resistors in service. We know that there is a one amp passing through this loop here. And the questions are, what is the voltage that they'll measure here? And why? This is what's the explanation for it or the analysis for it. And what happened to Kirchhoff's law? Because, well, if you look at this uh, loop here and you add up the voltages across these resistors, total voltage here, the sum of these is not zero, as you'd expect from Kirchhoff voltage law. So this is the riddle. Now, for, let me first of all say why I've chosen this E-core. This is a closed structure. This is a cross section. Now the material, the ferrite material, has a very high relative permeability. It's about 2,000 to 4,000. And therefore, all the flux is confined to within the core. Well, here it is sort of illustrated here. When I have an excitation here, the cross section again, we have the flux coming out here and going in here. And here we see this flux confined to here. And we don't have, oh, there's very little stray magnetic flux outside. Now, this is important because if you like to do some measurements in which you assume that there is a flux here, here are the two instruments that measure the voltage across these resistors. Here it is. This is the solenoid, two resistors. You measure here and you measure here. Now, if you do this measurement like this, there's a problem here because here we have a flux coming out and therefore penetrating this loop here and the reading here is wrong. So there is an error here. And therefore, in order to eliminate this uh, source of error, I've chosen um, to deal with this closed structure. It could have been something else. It could have been a toroid or some other structure. I've just uh, used this uh, double E core. Now, as I've mentioned in the previous video in which I've posed the riddle, uh, the riddle was actually inspired by a set of lectures in videos by Professor Walter Larian. And in this case, he showed a certain circuit and sort of pointed out there seemed to be a puzzle as to the circle and how you uh, interpret uh, the readings of the voltages of this circuit. Now, let me just uh, bring to your attention that he is also using this solenoid structure, and these are the two measurements here, and obviously he has some error uh, in his measurements, but uh, the conclusion of his measurements are correct. So there's some error here, but they don't actually harm uh, what he's trying to uh, convey. Now here's the circuit that uh, Professor Lewin was discussing. We have this flux coming from this area, and there are two resistors which are put here in a loop. This is it. So we might say a turn here. And we measure the voltage on this resistor from this side, and we measure the voltage on this resistor from this side. Okay? Now, as it turns out, when you measure this resistor and this resistor, let me have a look at this in this slide here. You find that here you have a 0.9 volt, and here you have a minus 0.1 volt, okay? So this is a 0.1 volt, and this is 0.9, which looks like, well, from two aspects, very strange. First of all, KVL doesn't hold here because the sum of these is not zero, and also 
it's a little bit disturbing that you have a 0.9 volt in parallel to the minus 0.1 volt. Now you'd say, okay, well, maybe there's no zero here where it's some induced voltage, like here, it's, is it zero? Well, it is zero, and uh, we have actually measured it. Here it is, this is the double E core, and here it's a one probe, another probe, there's zero, or just to make sure that uh, there is excitation, there is a sensing loop here, and then we measure here, and we measure here. This is the double E core, these are the probes here, and lo and behold, this is the excitation, and the voltage across this line is zero. So indeed, there's zero. In fact, if you just hook up these two voltmeters together, like here and here, you also get 0.9 and minus 0.1, for sure. So this is the sort of a puzzle or question that uh, Professor Lewin uh, posed, uh, making the point that we are dealing with a non-conservative electrical circuit, and then we have to be careful how we analyze and interpret the circuit. So the apparent inconsistency that we see here is really when we are trying to apply Kirchhoff law by itself to this non-conservative electrical circuit. Now, what is a non-conservative electrical circuit? It is a circuit that is exposed to a varying magnetic flux. That is, there's some flux going through the circuit. And then you, if you just use Kirchhoff law by itself, um, you get an error. You have to invoke Faraday law, which I'm going to talk about. So in this case, because you are dealing with a flux, uh, there could be a difference in the voltage that you measure depending on the path that you go from one point, from one potential to another potential. If you go one way or another way, you might get different values. So this is actually the subject matter of this presentation. I'll try to sort of clarify it in an intuitive way without going into uh, too much math or Maxwell equations in order to explain what's going on here. So let's go back to Faraday law. Well, in a simple way, we can say that uh, Faraday law says the following. If you have a varying flux, here's a flux, magnetic flux, um, there'll be an electric field built around it. Here it is. Okay? And this electric field in the dimension is volts per meter. And what Faraday law says that if you go through a path here and you multiply in a vector way the magnetic field times the distance as you go, and if it is a complete circle, you end up with the value of a voltage which is equal to the phi dt, phi is the magnetic flux density, it's in Tesla, I didn't write it here, and if the flux, magnetic flux density is constant, then it'll be just B times A, otherwise of course you have to take the integral if it's not constant. So this is the very simple way of um, representing the uh, Faraday law. Now, Therefore, if you put a wire here, then uh, you'll get a potential induced, electromotive voltage induced, which is equal to the phi dt. Now, it's not important which way you go, as long as you encircle the total flux here, then you'll get the same value. So this is the basis of Faraday law. This means that if you have a, a turn here, if you look at the voltage here, you actually see the induced EMF, electromotive force, the voltage will be equal to this value. This is what you'll measure here. And if you put a resistor, then there'll be a current, which is equal to uh, the voltage divided by the resistor. Now you can write an equation which looks like this, that the voltage induced, or the potential induced, or the electromagnetic force induced, 
minus i times r is equal to zero. So this is a mix actually of uh, Kirchhoff and Faraday law because you don't see this as a discrete component here in the circuit, but it is sort of hovering around and inducing this voltage in the loop. So once you do this, that's very simple with really uh, basics. Now, if I measure this voltage, then I have to be a little bit careful if, and to see what's going on. And as I've said, if there are no magnetic flux density changes here, around here, then I can sort of probe the voltage that I'll measure, and I'll go this way. Then the flux here is zero, I times R, and this is what I get. This is the equation for this mixed Kirchhoff and Faraday, and I got um, that the, the voltage that I'll measure will be IR because the phi dt here is of course zero. But you can go also this way, it doesn't matter, as long as you go throughout this wire here, then in this case, we are going to see only this the phi dt, which is also equal to IR. So we get the same thing here, and uh, we get the same thing here. This is trivial. So let's go back now to the Lewine circuit and see what's going on here. So we have a magnetic flux here. There are two resistors and two voltmeters put one side here and one side here. Now, in this case, if we assume that the induced voltage is, say, one volt, then if the total resistance is one kilo ohm, then of course the current will be one milliamp. That's trivial. And again, we'll have this is sort of a Kirchhoff flow, you might say, although we don't have the discrete uh, source, voltage source here, but we know that the uh, electromagnetic induced force, uh, then it'll be equal to the voltage drop on these resistors. And therefore, the voltage, the actual voltage on this resistor will be 0.9 volt, this is here, and on this one will be minus 0.1 volt, which is very clear. So now if I measure it here, then go this way, there's no flux here, I see only this resistor, therefore I'd see minus 1 R1. If I'll go all the way around, I'll get the same thing, because we have on the one hand the voltage drop on this resistor here, and then the induced electromagnetic force, and this is the voltage drop on the two resistors, and you end up with the minus 0.1 volt also. What about this side? This is again the same thing. This is trivial now because there's no flux here. You see the voltage drop here. What about here? Obviously you see zero here because uh, there's no flux here. There's just a piece of wire and therefore it is zero. If you go this way, then, oh, this way I should say, then it's the same thing because you have on the one hand the voltage drop on the resistors and then the flux change and therefore these are equal and you get zero. So everything seems to be okay. But as an engineer, when you look at this circuit, uh, kind of uh, bothersome because we have a voltage here, 0.9 volt, which is in parallel to minus 0.1 volt. And you feel sort of un uneasy as, as if there's a sort of a short here because uh, this voltage is, is different from this voltage and the voltage here is zero, okay? Now the answer to this sort of uh, puzzle is that what the R2 volt, R2 resistor, this resistor is actually seeing is not this voltage. What this resistor is seeing is this voltage plus the induced EMF. And when you calculate what is the voltage that this resistor R2 is seeing to the left, 
you find out that this is the feed dt minus this drop here, which is 1 minus 0.1 is 0.9 volt. So therefore, this resistor is actually seeing 0.9 volt. So there's no problem here. Now, you'd think that this should be simple and should be obvious, but as it turns out, even today, it, it's kind of a source of confusion. Here I have an example of, this is a homework exercise of, given by, in a course of one of the universities. I wouldn't say which one. And they pose the same question to the students. Well, here it is. This is the circuit, two resistors, flux. And the question is, what is V1 and V2? And they go through this calculation and they come up with an answer that says, both volted, voltmeters read zero. Come on. This is nonsense. Okay. So, back now to the rhythm. I've asked what is the voltage here. Now, if you measure it from this side, then, of course, you see it here like this, and the answer is zero volt, because you just have a piece of wire here that you're measuring. Now, if, however, you do this uh, circulation this way, this path here, well, in this case, you pick up the voltage here, the induced EMF, but then you have also the voltage drop of these resistors, and you end up with the same zero. Now, let's just pose here another question. Suppose you have one turn here, but this is just a bare wire. Now, what would you measure? Okay, the wire will have some resistance, well, maybe very low, but there's some resistance, not zero, then obviously you'll pick up a voltage which depending on the length of this portion as compared to the um, total length of this uh, loop. And therefore you get I times R, I being the current that would be uh, imposed here. Now again, from the same university, there's an equ another question here. There is a ring here around the flux, there's a voltmeter, there's some conductance to this ring here, and the question is what's the voltage that you measure here, and well they go through a lot of calculation and they actually resurrect uh, Maxwell here, and the answer is the ideal voltmeter reads zero, independent of the angle theta. Well, come on. So, let's go back now to our case. Obviously now, we understand that there's some resistance here, so therefore you're not going to measure zero to be correct. You're going to measure the voltage drop on this part here, which depends on the current, the total current, which is now the imposed uh, or induced potential of EMF and divided by the total resistance, including the resistance of the wire, and then the voltage will be I times uh, this resistance. Now, let's do some sort of exercise. Let's assume that this loop is something it's flexible, like a rubber band, and I can push this resistor up here, and this resistor up here, and then what am I going to get? if I measure between these two same points. Now they are over here. Now obviously now I can go either this way or this way, and if I go this way, then it's going to be the flux minus the voltage drop on this portion here of the wire. Okay, so it's very important uh, what are the paths that you go as you measure things. So let's do some exercise here. <clears throat> so let's do some further exercises here. So suppose you have this single, this resistor, R sub 1, and you like to measure it. And I'm going to show different way to measure it. Well, let's assume that you are measuring this way. Is it correct? No, it is not correct. 
Suppose you measure it this way because the voltage here is zero, so you measure actually the voltage here, well, you're not going to get the correct number. How about here? Again, you just pick up this voltage here, but this is incorrect. Now what about this? Also incorrect. What about this? Obviously incorrect. And this is actually the only, up to now, the only way that you should measure this resistor, uh, the potential or the voltage across this resistor, because in this you just pick up the voltage on resistor without any uh, additional flux. So here are some concluding remarks of all this uh, discussion here. There's no question that the voltage on an impedance is one, no matter how you analyze or calculate. But in a non-conservative circuit, you have to invoke both Kirchhoff and Faraday law uh, to come up with the right answer uh, when you analyze the circuit. And when calculating or measuring the circuit, you have to be extremely careful not to pick up uh, external or non-relevant magnetic flux changes because this actually will induce additional voltage uh, to the circuit, which will be an error. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.